Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a wooden spatula. Well, making a wooden spatula might not be something that you would normally think of making, but I thought it could be a fun project and it's an easy one as well. And it all starts off with an eight quarter inch thick piece of walnut. Well, I was digging through the wood rack and found this piece of walnut up there and it's roughly eight quarters of an inch thick, about three and a half, just over three and a half inches wide and 18 inches long. Now, I don't think I'm going to need the entire length, but for the paddle of our spatula, I think I'd like to have it the full width of this to give you more room to work with. Now. What we're going to start off with is marking our spatula out on this top surface as to the shape we would like. And as I said, I think I'd like it the full width. And I was kind of thinking that we would make it four inches for the paddle. And uh, I don't know if that's too long or too short, but we're going to try it and see what happens. So we're just going to place a mark here at four inches from one end. Now this will be the kind of business area of our spatula and from there we need our handle. And it's hard for me to say what would be comfortable for you guys uh, as far as um, what, what would feel good in your hand as far as a handle goes. And I really don't have any super formula for you but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of guess here. I'm not even going to measure this. I'm just going to kind of guess. And I'm going to say maybe here to here. This looks like it's, it's a pretty good width for a handle. I might change that. I don't know. And it looks to be about an inch wide. And I'm only just guessing on the measurements here. But now my curiosity has got the better of me. And you know what? That's almost exactly an inch. So when you're good, you're good, I guess. But I'm going to be drawing a line all the way along here at centered one inch in width. I think the next step that I'd like to do is I'd like to contour this a little closer to the handle. Um, curve it up. And for that, you can use a circle template. You can use uh, French curves. You can eyeball it. Whatever you want to do. Uh, I think I'm going to use a circle template. And while we're at it, why don't we curl these edges here with that same diameter or uh, circumference of the circle template just to give it some continuity and that will soften that back corner as well. I'm going to leave the front edge or the business end of our spatula. I'm going to leave that sharp edge as I may round the corners just a little bit. Um, but. Other than that, we're going to leave this pretty much as is. Now, we need to decide on the length. And I'm not exactly sure how long I want this thing to be. I'm kind of trying to picture my hand on it if I was to be using it, you know, given splatter and that sort of thing. So I'm thinking maybe somewhere around here. So you can see here's the head. I'm thinking around there. So where, what length would that be? And uh, it looks to be... 16 inches, maybe 15 inches. Let me just see here. You can see like this isn't an exact science, but that looks about good to me there at about 15 inches, maybe even 14. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking 14 inches. So we're going to mark it off here at 14 inches to mark the end of our spatula. So right there at 14 inches 
is where it's going to end. Just like that. Now, I don't know if this is showing on camera or not. I really hope it is. It's hard for me to even see the pencil lines on the wall, not here in person, let alone on the camera. But what we need to do at this point in time is finish contouring this here. You don't want this block square end on your spatula, so give it some shape now. Working within this one inch um, guideline of your handle width, give it some shape other than a square box. You know, maybe taper it in here, back out here, back in, maybe round the end. Give this thing some shape. I've drawn a center line here and also some lines just intersecting to where I think some contours would look good. And I'm just going to do this freehand. I'm not going to use any kind of template or anything like that. There we go. There's one little contour. And I think we're going to want the handle to be at the full one in inch. And then we're going to bring it in. You can see how precise this is not. And how we're just kind of sketching it out what we think might work. And I think that might work there. So what I'm going to do is now that I have a template sort of thing or I've got it drawn out the way I think the shape should be, I'm going to duplicate it on the other side as best I can. Just freehand sketch it. Doesn't have to be perfect. And uh, I'm going to be doing it off camera because I'm having problems working around the camera here. So what I'm going to do is finish this up and I'll come back and I'll show you the, uh, the top profile of what I've figured out. Well, in order to complete this spatula or complete the marking out of it, hopefully you can see that. Let me see if I can tilt that a bit so you can see the design. Uh, there you go. That might show you. But it's not as simple as the top profile because if you cut this out, what are you really left with? You're left with basically a stick that looks like a, a, a canoe paddle or something. I don't know. But we need a side profile here now. So the next step here, I just want to extend my line here on this one. And our next step is to flip this board over 90 degrees. And we need to mark out the side profile of our spatula. And so for that, we're going to transfer over the key marks, which would be the length of our paddle, which if you remember was four inches, and then the end of our paddle, which I just extended that light on, that line on. There we go. So there are our two major lines, and we want to consider now how thick the paddle is going to be of our spatula. And you know what? I really don't know. I've never made a spatula before. I mean, this would be mostly used for mixing. You wouldn't, I don't think you'd be turning eggs or flipping eggs with this thing. It's just, it'll just be too, too cumbersome. But, you know, I'm kind of thinking that we could go three sixteenths of an inch. I think I like that measurement. So we're going to take it, we're going to mark three sixteenths of an inch uh, here on our board. There we go. Three sixteenths. Now that looks pretty good to me there. You can make yours thicker or thinner if you like. That would be up to you. Now we're going to need a taper here at the end. I'm not concerned about that. I'm going to add that once this whole thing is cut out. But now we need the handle. And again, we don't want this stick of a handle. That's not what you want. You want the thicker handle, and we want to, to to angle up from the bottom here of our paddle of our spatula up to the top. So what is our thickness of this spatula? I don't know. I really don't. I'm thinking maybe half an inch might be a comfortable kind of a, a thing to do. So we're going to bring it from here up to the top, we're going to measure down at half an inch thick, right here. And now we're going to draw a line. 
that's going to go from this top corner right down to our three sixteenths of an inch right there. And then we're going to draw a line from our half inch mark that's down half an inch down to the bottom edge of our spatula. So this will actually be a taper all the way down. Now it's not going to end up being half an inch thick because of the angle of it. It'll actually be a little bit less. If you want it to be half an inch thick, that's not a problem. And I'll show you how to mark that out if you're interested in getting just a half inch thick spatula handle. So the first thing that you'll draw will be your upper line. So from the edge of your spatula to the very tippy top there, just like that, draw a line. Now what you want to do is place it here and instead of measuring on the 90 to our board, you measure along the same plane as your angle here. So oops, sorry about that, hit the camera with my head. So you measure just like this and you can see how exact this science is, eh? Just like that. That ends up to be about a half an inch thick handle and we're going to draw our line. Now, ah, there we go. So let's take a measurement here. You can see that that's a half an inch thick there, but if we measure over here, it's actually almost five eighths. So you can see how that angle makes a little bit of a difference. Instead of measuring on the 90, we're measuring on this plane right here. So what do we do now? Well, some of you have seen me do compound cutting on the scroll saw. And this project is absolutely no different, except it's done on the bandsaw. Well, the first step in this process, before you do any cutting whatsoever, just like with the table saw, the scroll saw, or any other tool, you don't want to start cutting until you check to make sure that your blade is square to the table. And truth be told, when I first checked this, this one was off. I don't know why stuff happens, but I've checked it and I've readjusted the table and I've verified several times now that the blade is square to my table. So I know my cuts will be square. Check the tension on your bandsaw to make sure that everything's good as far as your blade tension goes. And what we want to do is we want to cut this side profile of our spatula, not our flat profile here, but our side one. So adjust your guide bearings on the top so they're just above your project, just like that, and cut out this side profile. Don't throw out any of the scrap pieces or the offcuts because you're going to need them. Well, you may have noticed that I did not cut this one cut right through. And the simple reason for that is that we need to tape together the parts that we cut off. And if one less piece to tape on is better for me. So I just left that intact. It's going to be scrap afterwards anyway. But what we're going to do at this point in time now is we're going to line this up so that that piece that we cut off is now supporting our spatula and you can hopefully see there the lines of our spatula profile. So we're going to put it back together as best we can and you're going to lose a little bit of the thickness of the kerf due to the, uh, the sorry the thickness of your piece there due to the kerf of the blade taking away material but we're going to get a little bit of packing tape and we're just going to put this thing back together. You know, because kind of like duct tape, packing tape fixes a lot of crap too, right? Duct tape fixes everything. 
Packing tape only fixes some stuff. Remember that. There you go. You heard the tip here. So there's this one end taped together and we're just going to flip it over here like this and spin some tape around the other side just to hold it together. You don't need a lot. It's just something to keep things aligned. And once we get this taped back together, we're now going to use the bandsaw to cut out that first top profile that we did where we did all the sketching. So once again, lower your guide bearings down to a, to a height that's just above your stock. And let's cut out this top surface. I'm not sure if the blade I have in there is going to take these radiuses. So uh, we're, we may have to nibble a little bit at that, but that's okay because we've got some sanding to do afterwards. So let's cut this profile and see what comes out of the middle of this board. Well, that was a lot more nibbling in there than I would have really preferred. My own fault, I really should have had a, a smaller blade in the bandsaw. That's okay, it's no big deal. We got her done with some nibbling. It just needs a little extra sanding for me and I'm okay with that. And now you left, you're left with this centerpiece at which point in time now you want to peel off all of the stuff that is no longer part of this project. and. Um, Looks like our packing tape has done a good job of holding it together. Just see if we can't get this out of here. There we go. Ah, there we are. And there you can see we have our profile of our spatula. We have that little bit of a taper up here. It's kind of lighter than I thought it would be, but you know what? That's not a bad thing. Now, we've got an awful lot of saw marks here and we don't have a nice curve profile in here because of our nibbling with the bandsaw. I don't like these sharp sharp corners and I had said earlier we'll probably sand those off and I don't like this sharp sharp edge here and that too will be contoured and for that we're going to go over to the oscillating drum sander and we're going to be sanding this off and taking off the rough, sharp corners here on the handle to make this feel a little better. We're going to sand all of this, get this nice and flat. We're going to sand a little bit of a taper onto this front edge here because you don't want that blocky edge here. You want this to come down to a nice tapered point. And then once we're done uh, getting our rough shape, we're going to do some final sanding on it, but for now, let's go over to the oscillating drum.
I've got the majority of the contouring done on this and the majority of the saw marks removed and I want to get that taper on the front end. I'm just going to take it over to the disc sander. I really don't think it, I need a video of it. We're basically going to place it on end just like this and just guide it into the disc sander to get a nice taper on the front end of the spatula. And then from there, we're just going to use hand sanding to smooth out all the rough edges and take off the crisp edge here to sort of soften it up a bit and give it a really good sanding all over, right up to 220 grit, possibly even a little more. And the final step in the process, once all of the sanding is done and you're happy with the way it feels and looks, is to apply the finish. And for this, we're going to be using my usual food safe um, finish of mineral oil and paraffin wax mixture. I'll try to post a link for that down below. And we're going to give it a good coating, let it soak in. Once it soaks in, wipe it off, give it another coating. And of course, that finish will have to be reapplied as the spatula gets used and washed and that sort of thing. But enough of me talking, let's get the finish applied. A wooden spatula. Guys, an easy project and a project with a lot of variation. I mean, you could really change it up no matter, you know, depending on your needs, let's say. If you wanted it to be more of a narrow and a longer paddle, you could do that. If you wanted it to be straight and have it just as kind of like a stirring spatula, you could do that. Mix up your handle, carve your handle by hand instead of using that oscillating drum sander. There's all kinds of things that you could do with it if you use your imagination. Maybe carve your initials into it to show who made it. You know, whatever you like. I mean, do as you please with this. Um, just remember that when it comes to that coating, I mean, you're gonna have to uh, reapply that coating at some point in time. It just wears off, guys. That's all there is to it. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this week's show. Uh, it's a simple project, but a fun one, as always. It's always good to have you guys tune in here and drop your comments below, and I really appreciate that. So I hope you're going to join me again next week for yet another woodworking video.